All right. Yeah, you're live. I think we're live. Can anybody really? just help me check if we are live? Um, well, if anyone can hear me, or if anyone can see me, that'll be very helpful. It says two if, participants. Um, nope. All right, we are live. If anyone can hear me, or if anyone can see. We are definitely live. So I just managed to refresh the page and it looks like I can hear my own voice. So we are definitely live. Okay. Um, everyone's saying that nope, nope, nope. Can't nope. see or hear you. No. I nope. can't even On YouTube. I can't even see the chat on YouTube. I mean, what the hell is going on? No. Uh, uh, I nope. can't even on YouTube. See... I can't even see the chat on YouTube. Wait, I'm on youtube.com slash live, yeah, you know, yeah, I refreshed the page and it's I'm on youtube.com, so I'm not sure, like, can you refresh the page and, and see? Yeah, I keep refreshing it. And but what does it show? Your face and that's it, just a picture. Huh? I'm seeing the, the actual stream right now, so like even our conversation is, is being screened. I'm not sure. Um, mm -mm. Um, well, just... All right. No one can see or hear us, and there's only two participants, basically just you and I on Zoom right now. There are, there are people here, so like there's this person, uh, there's Quinn. Quinn can see and hear us. And there's Code With Me who says to refresh the page. Um, and there are, I, I have no idea how many participants there are because YouTube is not very reliable in, in this aspect from what I remember. And oh, that's right. This is, this is YouTube. So people can't chat yeah. on Zoom. I forgot. There are three concurrent oh. viewers. Yeah. So yes, we are live. It's just that we are on YouTube and we're, it's not on Zoom uh, as what we did previously. That makes sense. Kind of. okay, okay, so the verdict is that we are live. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry for the technical okay. difficulties. I always have technical difficulties with these things. Let me ask one more time if they can really hear us or not. Okay, cool. So, hi. <coughs> All right, Quinn says, yep. Oh, <coughs> I don't get it then. Hold on a second. So that means your, uh, sorry, just give us a while because of the technical issues we're having. Both of us are not used to live streams, as you can tell. Not my fault, okay? It is not my fault. No, not, not, it's none of our fault. <laughs> I'm not the one that's, yeah, no. <laughs> we're still learning, we're still learning. Oh, Nobody she says no problem. Um, well, Wait, who's saying what? Who's saying that? Quinn Wilson is saying no problem. See, I don't see any of that. Well, maybe I can't see that. Are you on, on youtube.com slash Zelda yeah. slash live? <laughs> I believe so. Wait, can you send me the link just in case? In Zoom? Yeah, or yeah, sure. WhatsApp or whatever it is. Yeah, I can send it in Zoom. Um, just sent it to you. Okay. And then I'm gonna send it to you in WhatsApp as well, just to make sure. Oh, I oh. hate technical difficulties. So good. <laughs> okay. Yep. I see it now. Okay. Good. Okay, I need to um, turn it off. Quinn and everyone who is together with us, can you hear Michiko as well? Because I'm testing a few things hey today. Hey guys, can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? Okay, so... Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, some people had to refresh as well, so... Well. Yeah. Uh, well, let's send out a tweet. <laughs> Alright, so does it say how many people are here right now? Uh, 
Okay, cool. Um, Whoa. yeah, they can hear you. They can hear me loud and clear. This is like the first stream that the audio is very successful. So I'm really proud of that. Okay, cool. Um, shall we begin? Proper. Sure. All right, let's, let's begin. It. So today we're going to talk about investing in yourself, and um, this topic came up from last the last time I live stream with Michiko and that was I think in two or three weeks ago mm -hmm. yeah and well yep. we just decided to talk about investing in yourself and what does it really mean to invest in yourself how do you invest in yourself and you know what should you do and all that kind of stuff so if you have any questions regarding this topic um, that's really up for discussion none of us are experts over here so if you have any questions or thoughts feel free to leave them in the chat and we will get to you as soon as we can uh, however our conversation goes all right uh, in case anybody doesn't know this lady in front of us right now she, her name is Michiko she is my assistant and we've been working together for a few things now uh, she's really smart so let's talk about stuff all right mm, no all right cool <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, the whole idea for investing in, in yourself suddenly just came up um, during our last conversation. So do you want to start by talking about how the idea came up, uh, how we came up with the idea, and you know, what sparked the idea, and where do we go from there? I don't exactly remember what we were talking about because we when we talk, we talk about so many different things. So basically, we're all over the place, you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, not not in a really bad way, of course. But uh, one of the things that I've been thinking about uh, these days is, of course, the whole pandemic that the the, the whole world is dealing with. And I live in California, America, and especially the, the state. Uh, we have been on lockdown since um, mid March. So it's been over a month now. Like we're not really allowed to go out. I mean, we can go out, but we're supposed to stay home. So naturally, so millions of people lost their jobs and millions of people are on unemployment. So I just feel lucky that I'm still able to work from home and make some sort of money and just keep myself sane kind of <laughs> yeah and when i think about that i think about how my life just completely changed when i started learning coding uh, about three years ago that's where everything changed for me um so yeah um i'm, I'm sure we're gonna just talk more about it as we go but yeah that's basically what we talked about last, last time right last yeah month. i think so you, you you were talking about how um so if you were wondering where Mich what michiko is working as right now she's working as a marketer in a restaurant so marketer for three a restaurant that has three different locations well, right. it's actually one restaurant. One restaurant with, with three locations. Yeah, with, well, actually four now. Yeah, four All locations. All right, four locations yeah, right now. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And the whole spark of it all is when she started to go into uh, programming. And that transition between you know, programming and then afterwards into design and into, into marketing. So that is, like, how do you even think about going into that direction? And I mean, well you said that this whole thing changed for you when you started learning about programming so why do you even start learning about programming again like what what does how does that tie into investing yourself okay so i have been working um at this restaurant for a long time for over 15 years and i'm a hostess so basically i walk a lot like a lot of walking i do every every time I work there. So, you know, I spent my 20s and 30s just working as a hostess. And I was totally fine because I was young. I'm still young, but, and at some point, about three years ago, 
I had to go see a doctor and I had to be on disability for three weeks. That's when the reality hit me, you know? I was like, okay, I really don't have any skills or anything to show to anybody. And when, when you're healthy, everything, everything's good. You can do whatever you want, but when you lose your health, what happens, you know? If you don't, I don't have my family here. Everyone's in Japan, so it's just so scary, you know? So I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I was just doing a lot of soul searching and a lot of, I looked into udemy.com and Skillshare. And I saw so many different courses. And one of the things that I saw the most was, of course, programming courses and you know, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Um, so I was just like, all right, let's just see how it goes, you know? I had no idea about coding before. I'd never done any of that before. So, you know, I think any programmers can relate to this, but when I first um, typed in hello world into the browser, I was just like, wow, this is so cool. Like, I was mind blown, you know? So that kind of got me hooked. And, and then I started learning, well, I, I took, I took some classes on Code Code Academy, and I did HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But JavaScript was something that I just couldn't understand for the life of me. So I got stuck completely. I had no idea. So that's when I started to invest in learn JavaScript. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, and that didn't really, I mean, I didn't learn, I didn't study much because JavaScript was still, I couldn't understand the concept of it, you know, even though I bought your course, which is really, you know, really good. But for me, I I just stopped learning JavaScript altogether, you know, for about nine months, I just didn't do anything again. So at some point, I told myself like this is this is not good you know I was doing so well investing myself learning something new so I can just you know make my life better you know my future better so at that time I was really interested in web design and um, UX UI design Uh, so I took another online course well school um, called New York Institute of Art and Design, and that was for about eight, nine, about, I would say about a year to graduate. And I learned a lot about design there, of course, Photoshop. I was so scared of Photoshop before, but now I'm just like, ooh, it's so easy, you know. I mean, it's not easy, but. Um, and then I noticed that design is not so much about making pretty thing. Design can be also about solving problems. That concept never, it was, it, it was never there for me before, you know, that design was about you know, solving problems. So when I applied that new concept, new knowledge into the, um, the one thing that I was really good at, which is the restaurant job that I had been working for you know, over 15 years, it just worked so perfectly because I knew what their problem was and I knew what design or how design could solve that issue. So yeah, that's how I convinced my bosses to hire me as a marketer and here I am. And here you are. (laughs) So let's go back to the question um, that we we were talking about. What does it mean to you to invest in yourself? I think it's about, of course, you need to spend some sort of money. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying a lot, you know, at some point I thought about spending thousands of thousands of dollars in in coding school, you know, I didn't, and I'm glad that I did it, didn't. Um, 
so I think it, for investing, in, well, I can only speak for myself, but for me, it was about learning something new so you can just, you know, use that new knowledge and skills for something different, something that you haven't done before, or even something that you've done before. It depends, you know, what you want to learn, I guess. So, if that makes sense at all. <laughs> mm, well, I guess I have a more methodological approach to that definition of what does it mean to invest in yourself. Oh, oh, mental approach. Uh, methodological, so it's like... Oh, me- oh there's a mental approach. Yeah. Um, well, I would... I will split investing in yourself into two different parts. So there will be investment in terms of money and invent- mm. investment in terms of time. And what we choose to invest on depends on our goals of what, where do we want to go and what do we want to do, essentially. And Colin has a, 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 has a good comment in there saying that investing in yourself is about controlling your image and making yourself into a better product if you're assuming that you're looking for people to pay you for your skills. And that is on the marketing front of investing in yourself. And well, um, I think that is a really good statement and it's really true because to me, investing in yourself really means spending effort into you know, improving your skills, improving your character, improving uh, your base capabilities. And that is what investing in yourself means to me of course we can split investments into time and money and no matter how much money you spend you don't like become better if you just spend money because you still need to put the time into work on things correct so then my major factor when it comes to the, the whole definition of what does it mean to invest in yourself is to spend that time and effort into improving a certain aspect of your life so that you become better at it so that is what it means to me. I think that's perfect. That's a perfect definition of, of yes, investment. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think another person is saying, oh my God, I can't even, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. You day, Sandra. He said, investing myself in this situation, COVID-19, by learning today as after Seeing your explanation on moving object fell on, fell in love with JS. Wow. He, he, okay, he's talking about learned like, JavaScript. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So now that so, we've covered the the definition of what does it mean to invest in yourself and for both of us, I guess um, the next thing we want to talk about is the question of how and when and where do you actually invest in yourself because it's such a big topic any thoughts on this where yeah that's i think that might be a lot that's a that's a tough one i think you know where you know because Ever since this lockdown started, I actually bought some courses online, but, you know, I spent some money, but I haven't had the time to actually, you know, learn all that. So just like you said, you know, a couple minutes ago, I I feel like I just wasted money at this point, you know, but I will, because I have another a month to go in this quarantine, so I, I'm sure I will get to it. But, um... For me, I just want to learn anything that's related to marketing. Um, I bought a course for um, for the copywriting, um, and then I also I want to learn how to make logos, which is you know not really useful for my marketing job, but that's something that I had always been wanting to do. So, yeah. Those are the two things that I've been dying to just take time and learn. Gotcha. On my side, yeah. when, when I come to think about what what to invest in, there are a few different categories of what I would invest in. Um, the first would be, uh, I will split it up into skills and you know basic capabilities of a person. 
So when it comes to say basic capabilities, I'm talking about like the ability to read a little bit faster or retain a little bit more than before, like your mental skills or you know uh, emotional skills on like how do you control yourself a little bit better, um, or how do you acknowledge your emotions and you know let it understand where where you're coming from, and also the physical aspects because we are also thinking about you know exercising is a big part of uh, how we keep ourselves sharp. And mm. how that uh, relates to our mental powers uh, over time as well. So if we neglect ourselves on the basic capabilities front, then then that that kind of dulls our blade in that sense. So one of the parts of investment to me then is about at least maintaining that those basic capabilities or even improving those basic capabilities. Um, the second part will be skills based. So, like you said, you are thinking about learning uh, marketing because you are kind of in a, you are in a marketing job right now, and you are also thinking about learning logos because you know you like design and you kind of you you want to learn a bit more than on that front. So, on my side, when it comes to the skills based thing, mm, I'm investing in learning more JavaScript, as which is obvious because I'm writing job the 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 course, and every single time I write. Before I write a single chapter, I have to spend time to, uh, you know, browse through the documentations and figure out things that I did not know before, and and clear up mm. things that I thought I knew, and changed my entire thinking about that subject itself. Which is why it's it's been so long, and I'm still writing it because I'm learning something new every single day, on that front. I'm also learning. Uh, I also bought a course on design because design is pretty important. So web design specifically, I am not going into logo design. Uh, I don't think I have the space to go into it yet. But it's something I want to look into in future. Whether I'll do it or not, it's another matter. Uh, and that's in the in the back burner. It's not so much of a priority for me right now. Then. What's more on the priority side of things, other than JavaScript, is actually about marketing and copywriting, and the whole how businesses are being run. So, in case you don't, you guys don't know, I am running my own business where I sell my own courses, and that's my full time thing, for the last few years. And the first few years, I kind of you know lucked into it, and it it was okay, and I was able to make it work with some freelance income on the side, but. Right now, I'm I'm full. I'm going into like full time teaching about the Learn JavaScript course. So then, the whole marketing and how do I sustain myself when it comes to the business? How do you know in the marketing terms will be like how do you generate leads and how do you make the sale? Those are really important things that um that I need to make sure my livelihood goes on. So that's what I'm investing now in nowadays. Okay. How I I I don't mean to talk about your personal life, but how do you deal with you know because you work from home, obviously you know you I, I'm sure you have your own office, but then once you step outside your office, there's another different whole different world, which is your family, you know. So how do you balance that? You know, you work from home. But then there's your family that needs you all the time. I'm sure as well. You know how how do you balance that? Hmm. When it comes to this question, I am. Well, my wife and I are working together right now, so she's just there. You know, we we share the <laughs> same we share the same office because we are also in lockdown and kind of lockdown in Singapore, so they're not allowed to go out to their offices to work. So we share my workspace that I, I actually had. Uh, so what we do is we close the door when we start working, and we both decided to work from nine a.m. to say six p.m. or seven p.m. And that's wow. the that's the duration that we're gonna work with. And during lunch, we're just gonna go out for lunch together and come back together. But other than that, it's either it's it's you do your stuff, I do my stuff. And. Wow. After six seven p.m., um, that's the time we spend with the kid, because she's like one and a half years old. We need to spend time with her also <laughs> yeah. until until she goes to sleep, and then there will be like night time where I have I'm I'm gonna do some of my daily maintenance stuff. Then we go to sleep. 
so that's how the structure is like of course different days have different different agendas like for example tonight instead of doing the the um, maintenance work on my side we are going to go to the supermarket to grab some stuff and that's like mm. a basic necessity thing that we agreed to do so uh, when it comes to household stuff, it's more important to form agreements and boundaries and you know keep them there. Like we agree on it, we just work on it. Wow. Okay. I, it's so organized. <laughs> I didn't know that you actually work from nine to six at home. Well, when 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 I say work from nine to six, I don't actually mean I start. You no, know, stop. Start at the chair at nine okay. and stuff. But I try to do that nowadays. Um, in the past, I was a little bit more disorganized, but I'm trying to organize myself a little bit more. And that ties in into what I'm saying about investing time. Um, mm. Let's say, for example, I start my day with a journal of a, of a mental journal and I write it in this cute little book. <laughs> That's so Asian of you. <laughs> yeah. So, so what happens is I, I will write the thoughts that I wanted to, uh, that are coming into my head. And there will be a, a mental clarity thing. So uh, remember I was talking about you have to keep yourself uh, sharp in terms of the physical, the mental and the emotional side of things. And this is one of the things that will keep me, uh, allow my, my head to clear up so I can focus better on my work. And wow, what's, what's funny is when I was journaling this morning for half an hour, the conversations about what we're going to talk about today just came into mind, which is how... Uh, it sounds like I, I know what I'm talking about, but it, they all formed slightly earlier this morning. Oh, wow. Even though we were trying to, you know, decide what we were going to talk about like, since four weeks ago, and you had nothing. You had zero ideas. <laughs> yeah. So now this morning, you were like... <laughs> yeah, right now, it, it feels like I have, I have a lot of things to say, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So but on the document, there were you. There, you didn't write anything. <laughs> right. So essentially, we had a document and to say what we are going to talk about, and it's like four sentences. What does it mean? How to invest in, in yourself, and when should you invest in yourself, and how do you, when, how, what? So that's those are the four talking points. I would say. Um, so yeah. since we are talking about routine, uh, what I'm trying to do nowadays is, you know, I start with a uh, thirty minutes of mental journal. So like anything on my mind I write it out then I will take a five minute break because there's a transition time between you know journaling and the actual working so that five minute break will allow my my mental space to clear up uh, and when it comes to enforcing your own mental uh, and your own capabilities on the aspect of, of that base awareness is the most important key you know, being aware of your surroundings being aware of your yourself being aware of what you want to do and all that stuff. So that five minute break is to, you know, restore some of the awareness that I put into the, the, the journal already. So that, that mm. kind of clears things up a little bit more. Then um, I spend half an hour to one hour learning. So that's like the most important thing in the day. Whatever it is, I spend half an hour to one hour learning first. And this few days, it's kind of like I'll, I'll plug plug in into one of the courses of on marketing that are, are on copywriting on sales that that kind of area, and I'll just listen to it for about forty five minutes to one hour, and then I'll, I'll give myself another five to fifteen minutes to clear things up because after you're taking like one hour of information, your the head is you yeah. can't really do anything at that point, right? So. Yeah. take about 5 to 15 minutes to clear it up and, and transition into work and in that sense I have divided work into a few aspects uh, as of a few days ago and it's really hard to maintain this this schedule I, I've been trying for a few two days right now and then it's like I'm, I'm my mind is just gone at the end of the day but what I do is I spend 15 minutes uh, so uh, sorry about 45 minutes on work that will grow the business mm, so okay. meaning i talk up a i talk up a uh a, a, a coaching session with uh, this business this business coaching thing that is supposed to you know help me double my income and i'm just working through the things that i'm supposed to do there and 
clear things out in the area. So there'll be about 45 minutes to one hour worth of work. Um, then I go out for lunch. Then I come back, I do a meditation to you know, clear things up again. And then uh, some memory work. And then I work from about 3 to 2 plus, 3 o'clock until 6 p.m. And that's my main working day uh, schedule from 3 to 6 where I hammer out things for learn JavaScript or I hammer out things for, you know, uh, the blog and stuff like that. Of course, the whole the whole routine changes from time to time. It depends on, you know, if, if I'm in a super big rush to complete the course, for example, then I would throw away some of the stuff that I'm doing in the early mornings and replace it with actual work. So that depends on the amount of work that I have. And if it is possible for me to maintain this daily habit or, or ritual of you know, being able to shopper myself mentally and emotionally, then it helps me on the longer run. And at least I learn something new every single day. I clear things up every single day. Now, at night, I do an emotional journal, so I write about what, what I feel. So that clears up the emotional baggages for me. At least it reorganizes and helps me understand what is going on in the day. I've always known that you were disciplined, but I didn't know you were this disciplined. <laughs> and, I, wow. And the thing That's, about, um, well, you know, the funny thing is I would say I'm not disciplined because I don't hit every single thing that I say I wanted to do. Yeah, but still, you know, you have this set of rules that you go by, you know, every day. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. It, I need that in my life. <laughs> well, you, you can decide on it and you know, say, let's do it. Go. I know, I know. But this job, for example, you know, working from home for three, you know, four locations, it just, it's so sporadic, you know. I, I do this job once, you know, like, let's say, emailing customers, and then one thing I'm doing, another, I'm doing another thing, another minute. It's all over the place, so it's really hard for me to be like, all right, from nine o'clock till five o'clock, I'm gonna sit here. I don't know, maybe I, I should try that to see um, how if that works or not. One technique that I learned is to time box your things. So let's hmm. say when I work, I don't. Okay, when I'm aware and when I work, like if I'm aware when I work, so sometimes I'm not, <laughs> right? Like I would set a forty-five minute timer. Because that's the amount of focus before I get distracted. So far, mm. so I started with you know you I I'm I'm pretty sure some of uh, I'm not sure if you heard of the Pomodoro technique. Have you heard of it? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's essentially the Pomodoro thing, but I realized that 25 minutes is too short for me. Mm. So my focus, yep. my my natural focus extends beyond 25. At this point, when I started, I had to do 25. So I slowly extended the amount of time. Right now it's 45 minutes. And once I hit 45, I go break. Mm, okay. Yeah. And that helps to, to get the focus back. So right now I'm structuring it in 45 minute and break schedules throughout the day. So that's how it happened. And you know, um, things like emails and stuff can be batched into one, one, one segment by itself. So all the small mm -hmm. tasks, you batch it up together and you do that. Yeah, I, I need to organize my time a little bit better. It's not that I have problems with, you know, um, focus. Because when I focus, I focus for hours and no problem at all. It's just that I wake up in the morning and I'm already emailing, you know, my bosses, customers from bed, which is, a, I think, a bad habit, <laughs> you know? I do that too. I wake up in the morning <laughs> and do? I'm checking my emails. And the first thing I do when it's... it's which is why it brings back to the whole the whole thing I'm, I'm saying about awareness because if you're unaware you fall into that default habit uh, default loop that you set yourself to and that default is what we are most comfortable with yeah and it no it feels like work is productive so we default to doing more work but it's it's does that mean is that the best use of that time at that point is the question and I, I mean, we don't know what's the, what's the best use of any single point in time unless you, you know, methodically test every single thing out in your day, right? But 
at least what I what I'm doing right now is I'm doing some journals to clear things up so I, re- I realize what is what is happening in, in the span of the day and stuff so that helps um, and setting that boundary between work schedules and non work and non work time is one of the key factors that you have to yeah. put in otherwise you'll be out I, I had this habit of uh, if I'm if I don't set the times I will work from say especially if I am coding because coding is once you get into it the whole thing the time just flies away for at least for me mm-hmm. I can code from 1 p.m all the way to 9 p.m skipping dinner at 6 and if if like wow. no, nobody's at home like I'm alone by myself and come from 1 to 9 and then I'll go and grab like McDonald's or something that's really unhealthy fast and then I'll come back at 9 30 I'll continue coding until 3 a.m and then I sleep of exhaustion wow 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 that's too extreme don't you think or is it normal for programmers i don't think it's normal the key that uh, that's driving me it's um it's an emotional thing that's driving me when i do that it's about you know shit fuck why can't why can't i do this i need to be able to do this i need to be able to do this i need to be able to do this and then i just keep immersing myself back into the question over and over and over again i can't pull i can't pull out i can't pull the plug so that's one of the the major problems it's it's not about productivity then in that case it's about compulsion Hmm. it's a it's a compulsive action when i'm doing that or like without being able to stop Hmm. and to me right now the key to being productive and also the key to being aware of all this stuff is you need to invest enough awareness into your own space so you know when to stop when to start because life is not all about you know work and there are lots of lots of other aspects <laughs> that you need to handle right <laughs> oh that yes life is not about work but i make it about work right now unfortunately <laughs> yeah 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 so that's that's yeah, my life is completely is. unbalanced you know and that's not healthy i know that it's not healthy so yeah mm, well let's say what everyone say uh, all right colin is saying not only is documentation important for learning but using social media and email to expose yourself to different perspective is something i found very useful if all your media inputs represent what you're trying to grow in it's kind of like moving in a foreign country to learn their language and it's quite effective mm. yeah uh, he and colin likes to start the morning with work because it's leads to lesser distraction and then he leaves the learning to the later hours when he's not um, against any deadlines and can relax well i'm on the other f- side of the fence like i start if i start with work i will work all the time i will i will not <laughs> be able to relax and you know get some learning done so it depends on the individual and, and how your emotional loops are being um, created over time it depends on your personal experiences so I have to force myself to do learning, otherwise I would not do any learning. Okay, so in a way, you're trying to tackle things that you don't really want to do the first thing in the morning? It's, it, it's not exactly that terms, you know, like I like learning, so I want right. to do, I want to learn, but I don't default okay. to learning. And so I, it's, it's not about for me, it's not about wanting or not wanting to do anything because I don't want to do anything. The best thing I can do is no, <laughs> just to not do anything, uh, not even work, if that's possible. But I, I can't because I got so much work to do. And even if I do that, I'll get bored to death and I'll find something to do. So <laughs> my, my, my default for not working and, you know, um, and relaxing is to watch anime or read manga. And that's not really productive at all. Well, I mean, it's not, no. But when was the last time you actually got to sit down without having to work at all? Like, without having to come to the office? My office is just across the room. Come on, I'm always in the office. (laughs) I know, but when was the last time you didn't do anything? You know, when um, work stuff is when I guess. Um, Well... 2016 <laughs> when, when I deliberately journal about stuff it's when I'm not doing work stuff it's when I 
you know uh, the, so a few months ago I had this period where I said to myself that I'm gonna spend 30 minutes doing nothing and I had to schedule every day or just yeah yeah every day I, I didn't I didn't yeah. hit like a habit and stuff but it, it went on like I do that like maybe 5 or 7 days per week thing and during that 30 okay. minutes is when I really relax <laughs> And it's like you cannot do anything, not even walk. You're only supposed to sit here, and it's not you cannot even <laughs> meditate. No, no meditation. Do nothing. <laughs> and that's that's how I'm investing in, you know, clearing up some of my uh, my, my my mental baggage and awareness issues and all that stuff that's in the space. Wow, so much is going on in Zell's head. It's crazy. <sighs> It's crazy, you know. We hear that men are simple, but like, apparently not. <laughs> nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Since yeah. we're on this, uh, since we're on this topic, I kind of want to address something that I've been noticing recently when talking to people. You know, I've mm-hmm. been, I've been um, talking to people every single day for like half an hour every day, um, where. I'm not too sure if you, if you remember it, but uh, I sent out an email with my email list uh, and saying that, hey, do you want to book a chat with me? And we're just going to talk for half an hour, right? Okay? So I did that every single day for a few weeks in a row. Some people flake out because it's free, but you know that's a different issue. But yeah. what I'm noticing is that for a lot of us programmers, we don't, like, uh, we, we, our primary actions and uh, our primary goal and our actions don't align. Wait, what? <laughs> All right. So what what I am actually referring to is um especially in this you no know, COVID nineteen um yeah. area and it's really really um f- uh, valid because a lot of us a lot of people got retrenched you know and you know what the what's the basic thing what's the what's the common thing that developers do when you you get retrenched can you guess? No, what is that? Developers decide to scale up in tech, in in their coding skills. Oh. So the the whole oh. idea is this: like, I get retrenched. I want to be employed. So I, and to be employed as a programmer, I need to learn more coding skills so I can you know stand out and be employed. So that's the that's the basic train of thought uh, that what most most developers go through. Okay. Okay, but employment itself is the goal, or like getting money is the goal for some. Like uh, some people be like, I I got an employment job, I want to earn more money, and then they do the same thing. I go and learn more coding skills. I I actually in people like I talk to people like that, and then there are people who have no income and they're like, I need to learn more coding skills so I get employed. But then they have they have no financial buffer at all. They just want to learn how to code. So it's a bit bizarre and I just want to point it out because that primary action of like getting more income is not this and we do an action that doesn't come doesn't that really link to the primary income. So we do a action that is secondary hoping that it will know uh, allow us to become a little bit more outstanding so we can get the job. So it's like a primary at this goal, we are doing a secondary action to hit this primary goal. We're not doing going after the goal directly. Hmm. So what I mean by going after the goal directly is, you know, if, say, I want to get hired, then the primary actions that I can do will fall into the lines of writing a resume because that's directly related, you know, to this goal of getting hired. Or I'll be researching who I want to work with that will be, like, directly related to the goal of getting hired. Hmm. Or I will be writing blog posts, or I'll be uh, working on, uh, say, uh, on a project with someone else in this company that I want to hire, or maybe I'll create a project for them that I want to get hired. So that's the primary, primary action versus secondary action. Hmm. So getting the clearer sense of what I'm talking about. Then let's say if yeah, you're, yeah. if you're talking about um, freelancing, right? 
the primary action, the primary goal then would be to, you know, I want to get more clients or I want to get better clients. And people go like, I want to code better. Yeah. But the, the whole key to getting better freelancing clients is, you know, I need to learn how to identify these clients that I'm talking about. I need to learn to communicate with these clients. What do they want? What do they need? And that's a very business aspect of it all, of, of uh, what, what, how does businesses run and what's the, fin- mm. what's the benefits to each one of us. Yeah. Right? But we, right. it's easy to fall back into our own comfort zone of, I need to become a better coder. So I can get more. So I so more people want me. So it, it's it's kind of like we're we're trying to drag people into focusing on our coding skills, but that's not exactly what people actually want. So investing instead of investing in what we naturally feel comfortable with, what we need to invest is in is in the skills that will lead us to our goals. That's a really interesting point. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because I mean, if you're really, even if you're really good at coding, how will, I mean, I don't know, but how will people find you, right? In a way. If you're a rock star, then people will find you somehow. But most right. of us are rock not star. rock stars. Like, it's, <laughs> it's really hard to, be, to get rock star status. Mm-hmm. So then if you are not, it, it, it's kind of, if you want to become a rock star, you need people to approve of you. And that is really, really hard. Instead of going the rock star route, what a better route would be, you know, to bootstrap everything and get all the skills you need to handle the clients and all that stuff. So you you build that buffer for yourself. It's a steady road up instead of, I hope and pray that someone will, you know, tweet my article and then somehow I'll be famous and people hire me. And that prayer of hope doesn't really help when it comes to you know, marketing and selling yourself and or making money. Uh, I'm using making money as an example here and, and coding because it's so prevalent right now in this in, in a in a coding field and everyone was mm. trying to learn the code. And I'm just pointing it out because I, I feel it's important to point it out. Um yeah, I had a question and I totally skipped it out of my head. Um I know, because I was like listening to you and I had a really good question but I Hopefully, I'll I'll get it back at some point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was gonna say. I was, wait, hold on. I I remembered it now. So, are there any rock star programmers out there already? I think there are. There are quite a lot of them. Um, but if you if you think about the most famous people inside uh the coding sphere, there will be like people like Chris Choir, um, Sarah Dresner, Sarah Swedan. Harry Roberts, those are the rock stars in our industry. If you look at our Twitter accounts, they'll be like 20,000, 200,000, 80,000 followers. Kind. We're not talking about, like, if, if you're this kind of person, you'll get, you'll get all sorts of, um, all sorts of opportunities and all sorts of referrals coming to you. But most of us are not. Mm, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Omar, for you both, how do you manage and consume knowledge from online courses, articles saved to be read later, <laughs> audiobooks, podcasts, long social media streams, and so on? Is there a system you use for? Mm. You want to go first, Del? <laughs> no, maybe you can go first. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> Uh, how do I manage and consume knowledge from online? How do I manage? I never actually thought about how do I manage and consume knowledge from online courses. Hmm. Thank you later. I don't really know how to answer this question, to be honest. Any any ideas? <laughs> hmm. Well, it depends on uh, everyone's learning uh, objectives and learning perspectives and how you actually learn. So for me, I don't really care about writing down things sometimes because I generally forget about all of everything that I write down <laughs> after a while. <laughs> but but that's Wait, what's it. the point of writing it down then <laughs> if you're going to forget? Um, you know, you, if you write it down, you can search for it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. So that's that's the that's the whole key to writing things down so you don't forget about them. <laughs> okay, let's say for example, like uh, the the things off the top of my head is okay. Um I well, I can't remember any any coding related stuff, even though like most of the people here are about coding uh, coding related. But because when it comes to coding I generally write my stuff down and then once I wrote them down I remember. I've no idea why but I remember. And if I don't need to if I if I need to check syntax or anything, I can just do a quick Google and like figure out the syntax. Mm, okay. So like, if I if I need to remember something that I've wrote, then you know I could do a quick Google search about my website and then the thing that I wrote about. So essentially every my my blog is a documentation for all the things I do about coding. I was gonna say, yeah. Yeah. So basically you write so you can remember later. Yep. But you're yeah, but you're sharing that with other people as well. Correct. In in, in a way, I'm not writing to make sure I remember, but I'm writing to make sure other people understand how to do this. And it just so happens that if when it comes to the point where I don't understand how to do this, that article helps me out. Oh wow. That's that's interesting. I never knew that. Yeah, so for example, if we talk about um say mongoose, for example, like this very top is a topic um, that I dove into for a while when I was creating the backends for my course, you know, trying to get things up. And there is practically no good information about mongoose anywhere on the internet. It's a lot of jargon and a lot of weird stuff that I don't really understand. So I spent a lot of time in code figuring out what each thing is about. And then once I kind of have a semi good understanding of what it is i don't teach everything that i know because uh, it's sometimes it's too much sometimes i just leave comments in my own code and i know how to fit, come back to it but i teach the basics of what uh, need what you need to get to at least this level to accomplish what you need what what, what you want to do into say if you want to save things in a database you want to retrieve things from a database or update things from the database what's the easiest way to do it so those are the kinds of things that I teach and you know sometimes will be like some things will be experimental like example you can there's a way you can use the the mongoose thing to create an error but then I realize it's not after a while I realize it's not effective because it constricts the way you code so you know things like that I don't really teach because it's not it's, it's proven to be experimental or if I want to talk about it I say it's experimental so that's one way I remember how stuff when it comes to coding. But when it comes to say marketing or other aspects, then I don't have a blog on those things and I don't want to keep a blog on those things. I don't want to teach marketing because uh, there's so many others who are doing it out there already. Uh, even though there's like people who are teaching how to code, but no, at least at this point, teaching marketing is not what I want to focus on. So what I do is I create like a notes or resource section in my in my files and then I just jot down stuff that I kind of felt is important or want to remember. Then next time if I really want to check things out I'll just you know, go and search through it and see if anything strikes my mind. But it's not a uh, there's no like one straight process of what I actually do at this point. I'm still figuring out uh, what's a better way. Hmm. So many thoughts in my head right now <laughs> as I am listening to you. And then I have so many questions and I just forget. The, the, it's my, when it's, it's my turn to talk, I just forget. <laughs> uh, see, I need to write it down. This is, <laughs> this is what the pen and the note is for. <laughs> oh, man. I had at least like two questions. They all... My mind is useless sometimes, you know, well, my memory. What are they about? I had a question. I had some questions about marketing. Um, oh, okay. One of the things. So let's say marketing for restaurants, marketing for online products. I think they're slightly different from one another, right? Yeah. Slightly you know, in terms of, you know, products, a little bit different. And do you think a lot of programmers are there? 
they also want to learn how to market themselves. Oh, that was a hypothesis that I had, right? It's about marketing themselves, and which is why I created the the brand, build your own brand thing. Uh, right. But apparently, no. Like, uh, I don't think many program. So there's a there's a difference between wanting to learn and wanting to work on it. Mm. Um, like we want to be famous, we want to become better at it, but few people are willing to put in the work. Okay. And so most program programmers, for example, in this case, they just want to apply for a job. Even when it's applying Instead for jobs, of, they don't. Right. Like most programmers, um, don't really want to put in the work to understand who they are applying to. Because okay, it's so out of the comfort zone. So when they apply for a job, what, what? What are they actually looking for? Is it the salary mainly, or no idea? And I've I I can't really talk about applying for jobs because I haven't even gotten a job before. Oh, uh, that's true. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm 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 super unqualified to talk about getting jobs. But if you want to talk <laughs> business with me, I am slightly qualified to talk about you know business slightly, just slightly. Yeah, I mean, I try to get into the whole web dev you know industry back in the day. Couple of years ago, and so I'm still getting um, job listing emails from LinkedIn, for example. You know, and they all require at least three years of experience. You know, you have to know this and that and that. You can't just know HTML and CSS and JavaScript. You have to know five different things. You know. Yeah, that's I the problem. That's, I, that's the problem yeah. with most. Um, Email uh, most messages from LinkedIn and all the other platforms because those hmm. people are actually hit hunters. They are hunting people for certain kinds of jobs, and but they don't actually know the coding industry. So, when you don't know the coding industry, you try to conflate, uh, try to conflate values or knowledge. So, okay. in hopes that you will hire someone better. So let's say I I'm really good at HTML and CSS only, and maybe a little bit of JavaScript. Do you think I could get a job somewhere? Yes. Really? Yes. I never yeah. imagined that. So that would depend on what kind of clients, what kind of job you're applying to. For example, like I, I'm not sure why we're talking about jobs, but okay, let's put it as an investment <laughs> in terms of time and and and, and you know, since we're talking about investments, if you if you only have HTML and CSS skills, then what you want to do is to figure out who requires HTML and CSS skills, and mm. the people who require HTML and CSS skills are agencies. If you think about it, it what do agencies do? Huh. Agencies have a design. They design something for their customers. They have designers that, right. but they need to convert that PSD or that sketch file or whatever that that is into good HTML and CSS. So if you only have HTML and CSS and you're solid in and reproducing a design to a a, a a a website, then you have a job in that place. That's and it, it's it's simply that. a match between what they are looking for, what do they want, and where you are in your current um, in your current skill sets. So let's say, for example, you are good at HTML and CSS, and you get the job. What you'll be doing in that company is forever. Converting PSD to HTML and CSS <laughs> forever unless, and ever right. and ever unless you invest in yourself to learn something new and different. Correct. Yep, and then you probably have to switch jobs to a different to a different industry or maybe to a different kind of work. Like maybe you go into a startup instead, or you know different different kinds. Do a product uh, or something, or you know going to back end and stuff. And that's a requirement in, in investment in a different skill set. Well, this person, 1v5, said, yes, I was. So I am assuming that he or she got hired only with the HTML and CSS knowledge skill set. <laughs> no idea. I'm, I'm kind of feeling that because um, I saw this message from 1v5 saying that if I kind of have this feeling that uh, he or she is probably the kind of person who has HTML and CSS knowledge, but not much JavaScript. But, uh -oh. but we, we can just 
<laughs> debate about the other day, but let's get back to our our investment um yes yes topic. Absolutely. So where where were we? Yes. We we sidetracked for a bit <laughs> over there. Completely, we derailed completely. <laughs> um, investing. Yeah. So um, um, I think now is the perfect time, right? You know, the COVID nineteen is giving us so much time to learn new new things and different things. You know. So it's. It, I think it's. It's up to you to use that time to do nothing or or learn something, mm-hmm. right? Then the question is, what do you invest in? Like we talked about uh, yeah, what you are going to invest question. in. We talked about what I was going to invest in. But how do you decide mm-hmm. what to invest in? Yeah, that's. I mean, what. Well, I, I know for myself that all I do at home is just work. So I want to learn anything that's related to work. You know, like I said, copywriting or or even Facebook marketing that I've been doing. I want to dive deeper into it, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm getting the hang of it. And I, I'm really, really enjoying Facebook advertisement right now. So um, I that's another thing that I want to learn eventually. Mm-hmm. I guess what we can do is look at our own lives and see there, there, are diff- there are a few different keys of what we can do. So the first thing is um, where do you want to go? So that's your, that's your goal-oriented thinking into the future. If I want to become a web developer, I need to invest in web development skills, for example. Right? Mm-hmm. The second way to think about it is uh, what are you unhappy with? If you're unhappy with something, that means something can be changed for the better. And that's, that means figuring out what that unhappiness is about and yeah. finding something to improve it. It might be uh, maybe the relationship in the family isn't that well, so that means you know, improving in the communication skills with the family members and stuff like that. And, and you know, like there are very good books about this chap- this topics. It came to mind because it's, it's this topic came to mind because a few years ago I was in this situation. So I had to invest mm. time and skills to at least learn to talk with people around me, uh, like close family members. I'm still not really good with talking to strangers, for example. Like I'll flunk at meetups because I don't really know what mm. to talk about. But you know, yeah, it's about finding that thing to invest in. And the third thing to invest in would be like I was I was talking about the the first one would be skills to where you want to go and where you need to be. The second one would be communications because with your family and the people related to you and that's really really important at all times anyway. So it's it's good to invest in that those kind of skills. And the third one is to invest in your personal skills. So like like memory, like learning faster, like uh, yeah getting clear of your emotions or your mental capacity thinking processes and all that stuff okay i mean it all makes sense when you say it like that you know (laughs) but for example i was thinking about this one friend that i have that i was working in the restaurant and she does yoga every day and that's all she does but it's not like she wants to be a yoga yoga instructor you know And it doesn't really seem like she's not doing anything else, you know? So, it's, it's, of course, it's not my business. But when everything goes back to normal, yeah, of course, she's going to be super fit and, you know, great physique, you know? But when she loses her health, for example, what can she do? You know, when I think about that, I get scared, <laughs> you know. Well, you get scared because you've been there before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I love yoga. I, I do it sometimes, you know. But I don't know. I, don't, I have a very mixed feeling about this, you know. It, it's good to be healthy. It's good to invest in yourself in exercise. But, and if that brings you money eventually down the road, great. But if it doesn't, then what? You know, if you're especially a server in a restaurant, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't know. 
Are you okay, Zell? Yeah, I'm, I'm shifting my Hello? table so I, you know, okay. go a little bit lower <laughs> and sit down finally after standing up for an you hour. You disappeared for a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, I, a lot of people are doing a lot of cooking these days as well, you know, me, myself as well. So that's also another type of investment, you know, I think. Because I want to be good at cooking, you know. I'm not a bad cooker, cook, but you know, I think this COVID nineteen is is just a really good thing. In fact, it's a really good time to think about your life because we are just trapped yeah. inside and we are forced to reflect in a way. Yeah. Uh, well, unless we are, you know, working all day, then it, there's not much of a difference. Like right. here and me right now, there's not much of a difference except we are just trapped and we're, we're constantly working. But for yeah. most people, it's a time to reflect. It's a time to see, to think about, like, if COVID-19 lives, do you want to go back to the same work that you were doing before? So that's a that's question. A, yeah, that is a good I mean, question. It's, it's okay if you say you want to go back. It's also okay if you say you, you don't want to go back. Both are fine. But what do you actually want? And that's the question. If you can, if you don't want to go back to where you were before, then, then that means there's a gap between where you are and where you want to be. So then you have to figure out where you want to be and you know, create some time and invest investing in your skills to get to that point so i just thought of something that i kind of want to share because sometimes a lot of people worry about investing money and, and money is a, is a very touchy subject uh how i like to think about it this way is this way right? uh, investment in time is a necessity because if you don't invest time you cannot gain the skills you cannot gain the knowledge and if you watch video and you don't you know, code it out, it, it doesn't get into you because you haven't made it yours. So that time and effort is required. But money is, what, what money does is, uh, it's a, basically an amplifier. I heard this from Sean McKay, from Sean West before, that money is an amplifier. I'm repurposing the whole definition here a little bit. So money is something that speeds up your rate of acquisition of knowledge of skills. Hmm, so okay. yeah. just just for example let, let's say for example for if you want to learn javascript it's a very simple thing there are two ways you can do, go about doing a uh, couple of ways okay the first way you, you can do is you know like me you go out there and bash through the wall and then try to figure things out it's like walking into a forest and then trying to fit find out where your exit is you roughly maybe you roughly know the exit but what you're trying to do is to walk through the entire path in the forest by yourself and you have no way to navigate through the forest hmm. second way much faster would be to pay someone to guide you across the forest so any paid resources will do that like if you buy an, a book that book will have a map by itself if you go for a boot camp that boot camp will also have a map if you say buy my my javascript course that javascript course also has a map so when you have a map to go through that forest, you go there a little bit faster than if you were to bash through it yourself. So that's the idea of money as a amplifier to speed when it comes to learning. 100%. 100%. I am from a very small town in Japan, so um, I didn't go to college. I just, you know, I went, I graduated from high school and I worked for about three years to save up money to move to know United States um, so I never really had the mentality of investing in myself before let alone spending money you know to learn something new you know I never did that in my 20s or 30s you know like 30s yes I did it eventually but and of course you know if you can afford it perfect but I know there are people out there that can really, they can't afford that kind of investment, you know? And I understand that because I've been there before. So, um, but once you, like, once you break that, 
not necessarily break it, but if you, like, if you, there's, if there's something that you really want to learn and you try to save money for that, then I think I feel like your world, entire world, will change. And at least that's something that happened to me, you know, because ten years ago I would never spend that much money on learning design or coding, you know. So what's that? What's that major change that 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 happened when you finally spent some money to learn something that you wanted? Major change. Yeah. What? What? What's that? You see, you you said that your world would open. So what? What was that for you? It. I felt like everything was connected in a sense. You know, from the the time that I learned coding and then to design, and strangely enough. Design is what got me this job as a marketer for some reason, you know. Even though I don't have any experience as a marketer previously, so if I never learned coding, I don't think I would be here right now. I don't. I think I would be just reading comic books or something and not doing anything productive, you know, <laughs> and just spend. Days and days on quarantine, not doing anything. Honestly, you know? not saying that it's a bad thing, but I'm glad it worked out the way it did. Oh, Colin is saying the major change is the approval and confirmation that you're doing the right things and following the right paths. Man, Colin always has the right thing to say. <laughs> yeah, Colin is smart. Unlike me, I have, ah. no- I have nothing good to say. <laughs> Wait, you know Colin? No, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> but well, co- from his comments, we know that Colin is smart. <laughs> yes, yes, <Yeah>. yes, <laughs> very much. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wonder if he's a programmer. I'm sure he is. I think so. Most of the people <laughs> that are on this, you know, stream <laughs> are probably programmers. Ex- except we are talking about marketing and not programming. <laughs> mm. True. Yeah. yeah. And. You know, the funny thing about programming is I'm not invested in, in let's let's put it this way, I'm not interested in becoming a good programmer. I just dive into it because I or or rather, uh I I'm not too sure how to even put this across because like you know, most programmers when they go into coding they they that I want to become a good programmer and become the best programmer out there. So I, I probably the the background motivation is to get hired or something. But for me, uh, my my interest when it comes to programming is to be able to make something, and that's it. So I'm not interested. That's in, it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. I'm not interested in being being one of the best programmers out there or anything like that. So like, if I can make something, I'm happy, and then if I can improve the code I am writing, then I'll, I'll be even more happy because I'll I'll help myself to make more things and in a better fashion going forward. So. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Ah, so Colin is a programmer, like we predicted. Yep, obviously. <laughs> it was too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's looking for a new job. Yeah, well, I think Colin wow. is on the right path from what he is saying so far. At least he's doing a lot of work. I remember seeing that he's doing a lot of work researching about the companies he wants to get hired, and that is a time investment. In that case, mm. it's. Mm. It's not an investment in yourself directly, but it's an investment in getting the goal that you want to. And to me, it's a good investment. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, it, uh, any type of investment is. I think it's good, right? You know, time, money. You know, if you have. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we spent a lot of time on like what it means to be, uh, what it means to invest in yourself and what should you invest in so far. Um, let's talk about our next talking point, which is uh, when should you invest in yourself? When? Yeah, when? Because we all don't Ooh. have the time. Like, right? Hmm. I think we all have that kind of a turning point where. We feel like we need to change something, right? Mm-hmm. I think we've all experienced that at some point in our lives, and I think that's the best time to 
invest in yourself. That's a kickstart. That's a kickstart point. I would say. Okay. What's your answer? <laughs> What's your answer? All right. So if if you're talking about that experience, I have a, I have a kickstart point as well, and that's when I decided to start learning how to design and code. So that's when I really, you know, put aside all my barriers and I just go. Wah. I don't care about the fears anymore, and then I just start learning. So mm. uh, that will be the kickstart point where you feel that things are wrong, things are not going the way that you want to go. Right. So that's a very good point to start with. Um, then going forward, I think my un my uh, my answer to investing yourself is to schedule out time for it. So ah uh, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. What kind of basis you uh, like? How much time you invest, or anything at all? Like what you need to do is to schedule out a certain specific amount of time for yourself that you decide that, okay, this is the amount of time I'm going to do uh, to invest. <coughs> so some sort of uh, sometimes it may be writing blog posts, which will invest in your own writing skills and you know, allowing you to put yourself out there a little bit better than before. Communication when it comes to writing is also important as well, so that that kind of links in together. And any kind of investment is is in that category. Uh, like for me, I decide to do one hour a day on learning something, and mm. I've been trying to do it. Like previously, I did half an hour, and half an hour was fine. You know, and I just keep working on it for. Uh, I think I did about a month or two, and then I flicked out because it was so tiring to keep, keep, putting yourself out there in uncomfortable yeah. territory, and when you, when you learn something new, it's really uncomfortable because it's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> you get you get tired easily. Yeah. And, you know, just everything seems to change, but you don't want to change, kind of thing. And then you know you need to do it, but you don't want to do it. And it's a lot of work, yep, so yep. You, there's this constant yeah. struggle to go back to it. Yeah. So, for me, I'm trying to do it every single day at this point, but it's also perfectly fine to do to to carve out one day in the week to do it, for example. Hmm. Um. But I would say, like, if you want to do it like on a per month basis, uh, especially when it comes to skills, then it's too far of a gap. If you say if you do this. If you le- try to learn JavaScript on the first day of the month, and you try to learn JavaScript on the first day of next month, by the time you get to next month, you've forgotten everything you have learned today. So, yeah. that's the problem yeah. with that. But on a per week basis, it's still you can still retain some knowledge, so that helps. Also, there are there are, there are, there are certain aspects where you cannot expect to to do it like a on a per month. Maybe you have to wait a few months to to do one of it. For example, like. Working or, or clearing up the the memory things or uh, or you know clearing some of the past trauma and and, and issues that that have actually locked you in a certain way of thinking or behaving, so that you can't really do it like every single month or every single day by yourself. You need external help, going to like a workshop or a course, and then that would you still have to schedule it like maybe at least once or yeah. twice a year I think. So it depends on what you're working with, but skills. I think you can do it every single day, half an hour to one hour. Set it aside. Or reading is also part of like learning skills. Yeah. So I would, for me right now, is that one hour I either spend listening to you know copywriting or that stuff, or I read. So it's a either or. I don't really care which what I do, but I do something in that one hour to gain new knowledge. So that's for me. Yeah, when I was learning copywriting a couple of weeks ago, well, two weeks ago, I was really into it, and I just I was I studied for about three four hours straight, and I felt really really good. So I said, you know what? From now on, I'm gonna wake up early, nine o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then I'm gonna have my coffee, and I'm just gonna study from ten till twelve, and then from twelve till. Five. I'm gonna do the marketing job, and then from six till ten or eleven, I'm gonna just do whatever I want. I haven't done that. I haven't done any of it. <laughs> That's almost embarrassing. How bad I am <laughs> when、oh, it comes for- to discipline. You forgot your lunch time too. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> Eating doesn't count. <laughs> so so like. 
if you're saying I, I want to do this from nine to twelve, that's a very big investment. Yeah. It's a very big investment, and if you if you if you uh, research a little bit about how you, on the power of habits, and you know Charles Duhigg has this book called The Power of Habits, James Clear has this book called Atomic Habits. Both of them, if you say is that if you want to pick something up and build it into a routine on a daily basis, you need to start with something small. So like a three hour chunk is you will not, you will forget that you will not do it. Because it takes so much yeah, effort yeah. to even sit yourself and go like, I need to do this for three hours. You know, and you yeah, sense, you I, sense maybe that's the reason why. Yeah. Yeah, that's or the. We're also waking up at nine o'clock in the morning. I'm like, no, I don't want to wake up at nine. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the dread that comes out. You know. It's yeah. Like, or that ah, if you if you switch it to sense. something similar, say like, okay, I'm gonna just do fifteen minutes a day. Or I'm just gonna watch one video. And I'm gonna take notes on that video. That's and just do it one ah, video like a day, that. and that changes everything. That changes the entire approach. That's a very good one. Yeah, I might start doing that. But I feel like the moment I make a plan, I just want to just like ruin it. You know. Well, that's that's. That's I think that's a plan. That's, that's, that's bad. That's you know? the thing about a rebellious nature, and that's who you are right now. <laughs> Hey, don't don't analyze me too much, okay? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, um, I can't remember who this person is, but uh, she wrote a book on the types of people that are, that are. So ah, I just can't remember because I don't fully agree with the book because it categorizes people into a specific way that you can't change. But so here's the the idea that um, uh. There are four groups of people. First is if you fulfill your external, uh, if you if you respond positively to external expectation and you ex- respond positively to internal expectations. So you know mm. people expect things of you, you do them. You expect things of yourself, you do them. Kind. Mm. You no, know, then you flip all okay. those around. There are different kinds of. You, you also be similar to you know. I expect things of myself and I don't want to do them. Uh, I'm I'm similar in that regard. When I expect things of myself and I don't want to do them, and so I'm classified as a rebel in the in the sense because people expect things of me, I don't want to do it. I I, I expect things of myself, I don't want to do it. That's me. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's probably why we hang out together. Okay. Oh oh wow. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah, and it's you know I I don't really like that classification because you know you, it means you can't change, but you also can change although it's really really hard to change your motivations just, just keep that things yeah. in check yeah especially you know you can't leave the house these days so that's an excuse that i'm making for myself i know but it's so hard to keep myself motivated in that sense you know mm-hmm. it's hard i know it's an excuse don't don't point it out <laughs> yeah. So like for me right now it's like um okay I say I want to say uh, I'll start journaling for thirty minutes, and yeah. every single morning right like I said so that's the one of the the things I'm invested in so you need to create like possibilities of failure so what do you do when you fail in certain aspects hmm. so like in that in that routine that I talk. I I just ex- I, I uh, share with you earlier. If I fail in doing one thing, I'm just I'm just gonna move on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. Or if I start something in the middle and then I feel that this thing is more important than the, whatever that's gonna come up, then I complete this thing. I take that same amount of break and then I shorten the next item. Mm-hmm. So like you need to build a, a a plan in case of failure because we are not perfect creatures. So there's always going to be fallback plans and there's also a saying that you need to build in this one to two hours of margin time that means um, to handle emergencies or whatever that comes up in your life that you cannot handle uh, that's not in the plan because it's unexpected so mm-hmm. well, if, you, if you create a routine for that investing yourself you need to figure out and know, have some possibilities of leeway of failure so 
you know what to do when something fails. I that's a very good point as well. Yes, very much. Yep. And like Colin said, God, he always makes smart comments. <laughs> he says it's all about training your brain. The more time and repetition, the more you learn. As long as you maintain your health. Dang it, Colin. <laughs> Yeah. Well, he expects okay. to do laundry every week, but he doesn't. You know, like classic behavior. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do this. No. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what I noticed, okay, this this is one of the important things that I noticed for myself. Um. That for me, for me at least, if I say I'm gonna do this and I don't do it. It has a negative spiral to it. So what happens if it's uh if I say, let's say for example meditation? If I say I want to meditate but I don't meditate, I'll start blaming myself for not meditating. I'll get angry with myself, and then the next day I don't want to meditate. Wow. So there's a there's a very big negative spiral to it because then that's also the fear of not being able to complete the things that I set out and say that I want to do. So. There's a huge negative spiral in that area, but if there's a, but there there's only a small positive spiral. It's, it's just how I'm wired emotionally right now. So like if I if I do meditation, I'll be like, great, I did it today, but will I be able to do it tomorrow? I will fuck up. I think I will fuck up. <laughs> and, that, and that's just how I'm wired as a person. At least at this point, it's. It's not about healthy healthiness or it's not about being healthy or not healthy, but this is what I feel, and it's it's infuriating. I know it's ah, uh, I don't even know what to talk, how to even say. It. It's, it's like, I look at I, this, I, I, I look at this, and I roll my eyes. Why, why, why am I do, like this? But I am like this. So. It's like you're kind of waiting for yourself to. Fail in a sense. Yeah, I'm kind of expecting myself to fail at every single point. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking for failure instead of looking for success, and that's the default mode that I tra- that I travel in. Oh wow! Okay, I mean, I do kind of understand. I mean, I don't think I've been like that, but <laughs> it's good that you're not like that. Okay, <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I can see yeah where you're coming from. I guess. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, I wonder if they have any questions. How many people do we have right now? I have no idea. Let's take a look. Ah, uh, participants. It says only Colin and me. So, <laughs> but then again, you know, YouTube. It they they, the number of participants is not accurate. Unless you go it's not? back, unless you backtrack and check who is viewing and all that stuff. <laughs> Number of participants is who is actually who actually commented in like say the past five minutes or so. Okay. Kinda. Well, at least we, yeah. Well, we know Colin is here, so that's good. That <laughs> like, we're not talking to ourselves. Even though that's still fun, though. Yeah. You know, talking to ourselves. All right. I don't mind that. So, well, what are our talking points again? We had a what what it means, uh, what. What does it mean? Uh, so just give me a moment. Colin's always here for us. Yay! Yay. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we had a. What does it mean to invest in yourself? And we covered that already. Uh, mm-hmm. We had. What to what to invest in. Yeah. Uh, we cover when to invest, and I, I think we we talk yeah, about how as well in the as, in the well. midst of what we are talking about in routines and all that stuff. <laughs> so yeah, we're pretty much done with what we wanted to talk about today. <laughs> I I think. I don't know what's what's um, your take. Any questions? Colin, you have any questions, Colin? Oh, okay, here. He says, "What software software is streaming here?" Oh, this is OBS. Um, so I'm using 
open broadcaster software on a Mac to stream this live stream and then I'm using Zoom to have a chat with Michiko and that's the that's the combination I'm working with. Oh, so we have okay, Colin and Kai. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I think we're done. I've nothing more to say <laughs> about this topic. Nothing more to say? About this yeah. topic. I mean I can I can go on for days about any topic when it comes to self development or you know no, marketing don't, and don't business. go days, please. No. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> I mean I could, I could. Uh, yeah. But not days. No. Yeah, it's like 12 p.m. over there. Yeah. Like, I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we have. Yeah. Se semi. 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 Yay. Oh, Kai. Okay, so we have about four more people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's lots of people here. Um, yeah. Kai is saying. I can't hear them. Kai is saying noise suppression on OBS might make it clearer. So, are we being unclear right now? Uh oh. Uh oh. All right, we just have to look at the live stream and see what happens there. All right. Are you gonna Are you gonna watch the replay? Because <laughs> um, I'm not going to. I I'm probably scared. just to go into it to, for a few minutes to check things to out. Check, okay. To check the audio out. But I, yeah. Oh, some background noise. I wonder if it's me. It's probably my side, actually. Oh. Better? 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 My, my, my microphone is actually very sensitive, so it picks up a lot of things. Yeah, we got so much to learn when it comes to streaming still. This yep. is our second time. All so. right, all your input <laughs> settings filter. I'll... I'll I'll remember it and I'll look into it the next time. So yeah. All right. Thanks, Kai. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. Anything we want to talk about for this? I'm good. What about you, I'm Del, good. or anybody else? Yeah. Anybody else wants to make any comments on uh, on the topic of investing in yourself? Yeah, that's probably yeah. my my MacBook that is fanning out right now. And it's, I don't know, I might have to change my microphone to, mm. to, to fix it. Or like you say, or the audio settings filter thing that I'll have to play with. So yeah, I'll play with it for okay. the next time we do a, a, a stream. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, so shall we wrap it up? Yeah, all right. If there's nothing to say, let's wrap it up. <laughs> let's not. We're like, we just like reading comments. Yep. Okay. So, um, I I I I'm I suck at wrapping things up. Can you wrap it up? <laughs> Wait, Kai, Kai says Warren Buffett always says to invest in yourself. Don't know if you said that. <laughs> I love that man, Warren Buffett. Uh, he's a very smart man. Yes. Well, we. Were, uh, we we kept saying uh, we were talking about what to invest in and how to invest in and stuff. So, yeah, I think so. Essentially, let's let's go through um, a very general overview of what we talked about. Uh, the first thing is what does it mean to invest in yourself? And to me, that means uh, moving yourself to a better position of where you want to go to. And investments would take both time, uh, mostly time and effort. And if you have money, that will speed up your investments if you are willing to spend them. Uh, your, that will speed up your growth if you are willing to spend the money. Um, when it comes to what you invest in, you want to think about your goals of where do you want to go to. Then uh, you want to think about you know what you're unhappy about right now. So that's one potential source of improvements. And the third is uh, the investing in your personal capabilities of your physical, your mental and emotional side of things. So you become better as a person and you can take on more things. As to when you should invest, um, I, my answer is to set up a schedule for your own investment. It can be weekly, it can be monthly, it can be a few times a year. It depends on whether you're investing a skill or, invest or do you need more support and help. 
so that would depend on what I'm doing right now is I'm investing one hour every day and I think that's a good approach because we're scheduling time for that and how to do it uh, well like I said it's about scheduling time and actually putting in the work to do it so in general that that kind of wraps up the entire session and before we finish let's f uh, let's talk about uh, let's answer Omar here he's asking how many times am I planning to open and build your developer brand per year uh, I'm not planning to do it again at this at this point. So if wait, wait, what is it again? B Y D B. Build is your developer me? brand. That's the workshop that we, we oh. did like last Friday. Oh yeah, that's okay. Yeah, gotcha. um, I am not planning to do it <laughs> anymore. <laughs> at least at this point in time, uh, it's it's hard to do that marketing workshop for developers it's really really hard it's much easier to do like a developer workshop for developers rather than a marketing workshop for developers Ah, some people are dis yeah, disappointed so maybe you should start thinking about it really i can't see any messages uh, i don't know i feel like omar asked this question for the second time because we missed the first one yeah so it? yeah yeah i, I yeah. remember seeing it earlier so like we forgot to answer this question but yeah, yeah, I'm not planning to open it again, but the video will be out, uh, will be up. So you can always, you know, go back and watch the video if you need help with that. And well, who knows, maybe I'll do it in half a year or a year when I find more space, when, uh, when I finish writing, learn JavaScript, maybe I'm going to do something else. So no promises, but at least at this point, I don't intend to give another workshop on building a developer brand. Yep. All right. All right. And with that, I think we can say bye. Um, so <laughs> thanks for joining us today. Uh, you can be anywhere in this world doing all sorts of things when you chose to join us. So thank you for spending the time with us. Uh, I, I hope, I think we hope that you actually find this session valuable and it kind of, it helps you in some way in your life. Yep. And if it does, <laughs> If it does, write back to us. Uh, just email me. You know, we know where to contact me. I'll let Michiko know about your comments. So uh, if you find this useful, let us know. And well, we'll see what, what we can think of to talk about in future or, or just life code something. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Or, you know, if, if there's anything that we should talk about next time, if there is a next time, if I'm invited again, I doubt. Cheers. <laughs> So yeah, for open suggestions, right? I guess. Yep. Um, you got anything you yeah. want to say before we go off? Uh, oh, this man is from Turkey. Hey. Um, yeah, it's always fun talking to you. You know, Zoe, I learn something new all the time, you know, every time I talk to you, you know, about you or about programming or marketing. So. Yeah, it's it's inspiring, you know. Yeah. All right. Um, thanks for <laughs> thanks for thanks for coming on uh, as my guest to talk about stuff again. Yay! All right, and you know, <laughs> yeah, like thanks to everyone for joining in today. Well, Thank I guess you guys. that's it. Bye. Bye. All right. Let me shut off this thing.